Good morning and welcome to New Life Christian Church on this sunny Mother's Day live from beautiful British Columbia, Canada. You've been listening to Ivan Pettigrew on the organ playing I Know That My Redeemer Liveth from Handel's Messiah. We'll continue with this music for a little while. So settle in with your favorite beverage, relax with our prelude, followed by our call to worship of holy, holy, holy. We hope you enjoy the service and the message that we will be bringing. Thank you so much, Ivan. Let's go to the throne of God in prayer as we open up our service today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have of coming, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in our service today. I pray, Lord, that your rich blessings will rest upon each one of us here today. And those that are watching by YouTube, we're asking, Lord, that your presence will be felt among them as they reach out and touch you. Also, Lord, I want to say thank you so much for our people that give so sacrificially in their tithes and offerings. Bless them abundantly, I pray. And Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us throughout this service. And we'll be careful to praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's open the service with a beautiful hymn, He Is Here. Now, a lot of people don't think Jesus is around. He's up in a cloud someplace. No, no, no. He is right here, here. and is going to minister to you through this yeah, service. Okay. I got it.
beautiful hymn, just a beautiful hymn. Next hymn that we're going to sing is Jesus is the sweetest name I know. You know what? I just, it just hurts the heart of God. And I know it hurts when you hear people use Jesus's name in vain. Oh, if they would only know that Jesus is the sweetest name we know. He's just the same as his lovely name. And that's the reason why I love him so. Oh, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Let's sing it to Jesus this morning. Yes, it is the sweetest name that we know. Let's go to the word of God this morning for our scripture reading. Kathleen comes to read the powerful word of God today. Today's scripture reading is from Exodus uh, 20 and 2. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 2, 1 to 8. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it, and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Wonderful. Amen to that. Have you ever been in conversation and someone says, you know what? No one really cares. No one really cares. You know, the message is that Jesus cares. And as we sing this song today, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Let's reminisce. Let's go back and see how much he cared for you as he brought you through life's journey. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Some 
thank you so much for that beautiful singing. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Well, we have a featured item that we give to you every Sunday. And our featured guest today is Jim Stewart. Jim Stewart has been playing the dobro or the Hawaiian guitar for many, many years. And Jim, we appreciate your ministry on the guitar. God bless you as you favor us with this beautiful song this morning. Oh, disorganized. <laughs> Nope. Sorry. It's doomed. <laughs> okay. This song was, or hymn was written by, or well, the music was written by Charles Converse. And uh, the lyrics were written by the name of Joseph Scriven. Uh, Anyway, it's a, a song that everybody knows. It's called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Well, here goes, the key is out. Jim, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Well, before we go to the message from God's word, let's sing a beautiful, beautiful song. Until then, my heart will go on singing. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home 
But until then, my heart will go and see. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day. God calls me home. The things of earth will dim and lose their value if we recall their borrowed for a while. And things of earth that cause the heart to tremble, remembered there will only bring a smile. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city, until the day God calls me home, this weary world with all its toil and struggle may take its toll of misery and strife. The soul of man is like us waiting how can when it's released it destined for the sky. But until then my heart will go and see until then with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold the city until the day God calls Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day when God calls us home. Let's go to the word of God. Well, it's Mother's Day. Great day. We honor our mothers. A teacher asked a boy this question. Suppose your mother baked a pie. There were seven of you, five children and mom and dad. What part of the pie would you get? She asked the little fella. He said, a sixth. And the teacher was just astounded and said, look it. I'm afraid you don't know your fractions. And uh, remember, I said, there's seven of you, five boys, mom and dad. Okay, remember that? Little fellow said, yes, teacher, I, I, I know all of that, but you don't know my mother. Mother would say she didn't want any pie. <laughs> the little fellow was right. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 says, Honor your father and mother that your days will be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Moses received this commandment from Almighty God. So the question is, what does it mean to honor your father and your mother? And we're looking at mothers today. Well, when you take a look at the original language, the word honor literally means to make heavy. 
In other words, we are not to take our parents lightly. God calls us to actively give them respect and to give them reverence. This commandment, I mean, it's a tough one to chew because we live in an age of disrespect. Youth is glorified. Old age is seen as something to avoid at all costs. And we see it in all levels of our culture and society. You take a look at television and go to the movies. Children, you'll see, are most often portrayed as the witty heroes. And then the parents that are on that TV show or in the movies, they tend to be pathetic, overbearing buffoons, uh, especially the dads. It's like the elderly is most often viewed as senile and to be avoided if you want to have a good time. Get the old folks out of there. In this case, it seems that the media is reflecting the attitude of the culture. Disrespect for parents. Disrespect for grandparents. And just as with all of God's commandments, this one has terrible consequences for nations and individuals as well. So the question is, why should we insist on respect? You see, the honor you give is the honor that you will receive. Let me illustrate it this way. Four-year-old and a six-year-old presented their mom with a house plant for Mother's Day. They had used their money and mom was absolutely thrilled. But the older of the two said with a sad face, you know, mom, there was a bouquet that we wanted to give you at the flower shop. In fact, it was really, really pretty, but it was too expensive. It had a ribbon on it that said, Rest in peace. And we thought it would be just perfect since you are always asking for a little peace so that you can rest. Exodus chapter 1, 15. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Sephara and Puah, when you help the Hebrew women in childbirth, and observe them on the delivery stool. If it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Interesting, really interesting. Now, here's another interesting part. We're talking about Moses, right? Moses literally means, get this, taken out. Not only that, but his name was prophetic as well. You see, the Lord used him to take a whole nation out of Egypt and to save them through the water. Pharaoh gave the order to drown the Hebrew children in the water. But look, his own descendants, Pharaoh's own descendants, died under the water when they pursued Moses in the Red Sea. Amazing, amazing. Well, let's take a look at the first point. A good mother is a priestly woman. 
Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. I need to read it again. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a pyrus basket of him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank, bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along and at the river bank, saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is the one, this is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, now listen, look at this. I drew him out of the water. Oh, what an amazing story. God protects, listen, God protects the priestly family. We need to remember the baby was a Levite from the tribe of the priests. And Moses' mother followed the law of Pharaoh and she put her son in the river really not knowing what the outcome was going to be. She had no idea whatsoever what was going to happen. And uh, he was placed in Pyrus, which was the ancient paper. And this is a symbol, I believe, of the word of God. You know, Moses, uh, Moses uh, wrote uh, the first five books of the Bible. And not only Moses, his mother got her son alive, but she was paid to nurse with the money of the family who wanted to kill him. His mother and his sister Miriam, who was a gifted poet and musician, raised Moses. On this day that we honor mothers, it's good for us to think about how much you really do and how much they really do. You know, being a mother is not a walk in the park. That's for sure. They tell us by the time a child reaches 18, a mother has had to handle some extra 18,000 hours of child generated work. The survey goes on to say, in fact, it says uh, women who never have children enjoy the equivalent of an extra three months a year in leisure time. Well, Moses's mother, who never ever believed that things were going to work out for her and her family. She was the strongest human influence in the life of Moses. He was able to fulfill his call. Listen, because he had a mother that didn't give up on him. Reminds me of the story. A young father was trying to explain the concept of marriage to his four-year-old daughter. He got out their wedding album and thinking like, you know, maybe visual images would help and, and explain the 
the entire wedding uh, service to to her. And when he was finished, he asked if if she had any questions. And she pointed to a picture of the wedding party and said, Daddy, is that when mommy came to work for us? Mothers put in a lot of time. Secondly, a good mother is a woman that has perseverance of spirit. First Samuel 1 and verse 5, we are told that El Elkanai gave a special portion of the sacrifice to Hanai because he loved her very much, even though she was barren. Verse 9, we see that Hanai was a woman of personal devotion to God. I mean, after the meal, she went to the tabernacle to pray to the Lord. The Bible says that she was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed. Listen, oh, when we pray like this, God takes notice. We just finished a, a Bible study lesson on, on prayer. Came to the conclusion how prayer just touches the throne of God. When we get down to business with God in prayer, he will take notice. I mean, there is no doubt about it whatsoever. In the intensity of her prayer, she made this vow. She said, Lord, if you look down on my sorrow, answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign of his dedication to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. Verse 19 reports that as soon as they got home, Hannah became pregnant and nine months later gave birth to a boy and named him Samuel. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is a God who answers prayer. In fact, the name Samuel literally means heard by God through a praying mother. And within the character of a godly mom, you will find perseverance of spirit. When external circumstances looked impossible, Hannah sought God. She got a hold of God and answered and was answered by God and was touched by God. You see, she persevered and turned the impossible into the possible. And she conceived. Oh, what a loving God we serve. You see, the bond between a mother and an infant is powerful. And so Hannah chose to stay home and nurse Samuel until he was weaned. And then she would fulfill her vow and give him to the service of the Lord for the rest of his life. Within the character of a godly mom, you will find great capacity. I mean, great capacity, not only for physical, but also spiritual nurture. If a godly mom raised you, oh, I want you to know that you are blessed. You are blessed. No matter what I did, my mom loved me. When I went through teenage years that could have broken anybody's heart, especially a mom's heart, my mom's heart went out to me not in condemnation, but in love. I've never, ever forgotten it at all. 
I mean, we have no idea how much our mothers nurtured you. I don't think we have any idea how much she sacrificed for you. You have no idea how much time she spent on her knees before God for you. And I truly believe a praying mom is a powerful source, powerful source. And then thirdly, a good mother is one that knows how to make a disciple. Second Timothy chapter two and verse five says, I have remember, I, I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded now lives in you also. You know what? We need to be nurtured as young people. Each one of us need to be mentored. I mean, we need to be told how to live our lives. And that should come from a loving, caring mother and a dad, of course. We need to be taught about what is really, really important. Someone has said, Mothers write on the hearts of their children what the rough hand of the world cannot erase. I think that quote says it well, that mothers are disciple makers. You see, I believe they have the opportunity to hand down their faith about God. They have the unique ability to demonstrate God's love and God's grace. And this was the testimony of, of Timothy about his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. Those two women guided Timothy to believe in Jesus. A teacher gave her class, second graders, a lesson on the magnet and how the magnet works and what it does. And the next day in a written test, she included this question. The question was, my full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick up things. What am I? When the test papers were turned in, the teacher was astonished to find out that almost 50% of the students answered the question with the word mother. When we are young, we need an example of sincere faith. Too often, and it's broken my heart every time I hear it, too often I have heard parents say they wanted to, to they wanted their children to make up uh, their own minds about religion. And they usually say that because they have not made up their own minds about religion or God or a personal relationship with him. So in essence, they are making disciples of their own belief system. Their children are going to believe just like them, unless someone along the line, there is an intervention. And this is where the church of the Lord Jesus Christ comes in. In our witnessing, and in our praying, we can have an impact on young people as we direct them to the things of the Lord, as we let them know that Jesus loves them, cares for them, can be a friend to them, and teach them the truths of God's word. I mean, it can change their lives. 
We need to learn the basics. I remember during those early years that I learned the elementary truths about God. He saves, he keeps, he satisfies, he loves, he forgives. I remember learning about Jesus. If you have not had a conversation with Jesus, if you have never been in a position where something within your heart is, is, is just knocking at your heart's door and you're wondering what it is, you may be in a situation with this COVID thing going around and you're saying, I don't know which way to turn. I'm getting this, I'm getting that. I don't know if I'm getting the truth. I don't know if people are lying to me. I, I don't know what to do. And there's a fear that has gripped your heart. And there are thoughts that Satan has put in your mind that says, if this is what life is all about, why be here? Don't be a statistic where we hear of, of, of the suicide rate that's just going out the window like you wouldn't believe. No, 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 no. God doesn't want you to go there. God is saying, my son was sent to this world because Jesus loved you. And if you stop, Well, Pastor, you got Rosen. So, maybe. Okay. Well, Pastor, you got frozen. Yes. I see. I see you're still there. Yes, we are. Someone's after me. It looks like folks, but I tell you what, I think you got the message. And how important mothers have been in their spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and has passed it on to us. And, you know, we can sing this song because of all that. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Sing it out. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay when we all get to heaven. What a day.
day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, friends, that is going to be a beautiful, wonderful time when we get to see Jesus. Well, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have of being with the family of God, rejoicing, thanking you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. <laughs> Lord, we've honored mothers today. And I thank you, Lord, for the input that they have had in our lives, and we thank you for it. And Lord, as we reminisce the goodness of the Lord, there may be someone that's listening, watching today that says, I don't know Jesus. But if what you say he is, is, I want him to wash my sin away. I want to live for him. And if you would pray this prayer, Father, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. Thank you that you rose and that you are alive. And Father, I just pray that your risen, your risen situation has made it possible for me to come to you and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin and let him do it for you today. And I'll praise you and I'll give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your heart to Jesus, you're a Christian. And uh, follow him. Get into a Bible-believing church when it opens up. You're more than welcome to come and visit us, New Life Christian Church here in Chilliwack. But we just want you to know that from this moment on, that there will be such a heart desire to know more about Jesus. Let's close with our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Go with the Lord, and he will go with you. Well, that concludes our service today. We hope you all enjoyed the, the service and took away something personal. If you did, let us know. Have a great week. And we look forward to having you with us next week. Goodbye for now, and God bless. There, there's the souls. Well, I'm glad I got that fixed up in a hurry. You did well.